Oh yeah, National Signing Day. Yes, uh, the transfer portal gets everybody all wrapped up, but uh, we're only two weeks away, less than at this point. Uh, the five-star offensive tackle, Jordan Seaton, uh, has committed to Colorado. Was that, I know that Oregon was in the mix. Was that expected? Any type of big loss there? I, I think Oregon felt like they had a chance to the, to the end. Um, I was expecting Ohio State if it wasn't. Oregon, which is kind of interesting that he ended up going with the the other route there. Um, but yeah, it's certainly a, a position that they were hoping to address. Now, I, I talked on my our own podcast, the Odds and Audible's podcast, about how hard it is to expect a true freshman offensive lineman to really play very much um, or start. So I don't know if this is much of an impact for 2024, but certainly down the line, this would have been a player that would have been starting potentially in a couple of years, playing a big role. So um Anytime you lose a five-star that you had legitimate op opportunity to land, it hurts a little bit. I think they'll be okay. Um, part of the reason for some optimism is they have Jaquan McCroy committed. He's a pretty similarly rated offensive tackle recruit, also from the Southeast. Um, he also, by the way, just visited Colorado this past weekend. So um, we'll see if the buffs strike twice for offensive tackles Oregon is, is in on, but um, as long as you're able to keep McCroy, I think you feel okay about where you're at. Just because, again, I don't think you need immediate contributions in 2024. But a player like Seton, you never want to turn your nose up at. And that's that's a big-time, big-time player that Oregon certainly would have loved to have had in their program and would have been developing to possibly start as soon as 2025. Is the class pretty well solidified, or are there still targets out there that are on the fence and – Dan Lanning's hoping to reel in. There's definitely some names to, to watch. Seton was one of the primary ones that was uncommitted. Jericho Johnson is a big time defensive line prospect from Northern California. And if they were to land Johnson, they would basically have taken the top three uh, defensive linemen from the West Coast, which in any cycle is tough to do. But this year was especially difficult with Aiden Breland being a five star and Elijah Rushing being a five star and now Johnson being not quite to that level, but a big, big kid, like 6'4", 320, 330 pounds, going to be a nose tackle. Um, that would be a really nice addition to kind of fill some of this out. And they're, they're in on some guys that are still uncommitted and looking at other schools, certainly. But I think Johnson's right at the moment kind of the, the biggest one to kind of monitor. Um, but we'll see. I mean, signing day always provides some, some kind of unexpected – surprises and so there could be some good stuff some bad stuff we'll see when uh, when we get a little closer to that and then of course eric we've got the nfl draft and those eligible players that may make the move troy franklin comes to mind justin jacobs i know there are others uh awaiting those decisions yeah i mean i i think they're there's going to be some significant losses, especially in offense, for from early um, declarations. Troy Franklin will, I would be stunned if he doesn't enter his name. I think that's a pretty much a, a lock. Um, Bucky Irving, the star running back, is expected to enter. Uh, Terrence Ferguson, the star tight end, also somebody who's maybe not 100% gone, but I think people are expecting he will enter. Um, Jackson Powers Johnson, starting center. I would be really surprised if he's back. He supposedly has had an awesome NFL draft grade, and people are expecting him to be um, a, a pretty highly taken player for, for that position. Um, Trying to think on defense here. You mentioned Justin Jacobs. I'm not sure he goes. Jeffrey Bossa has a decision. That's the other linebacker. Um, I think that's it. I'm trying to think if I'm missing. Oh, Jordan Birch. Jordan Birch would be the other one who I do expect to enter the draft, the, uh, the defensive lineman who came over from South Carolina and really came on to close kind of the regular season. I think he probably is going to be a one and done at Oregon. So I think as far as I can, off the top of my head, I think those are the players that I would be looking at. So, yeah, it'll be about half a dozen early entries, I think, this year, which probably more than they've had in a long time. I'm trying to think if there's been another class – in my lifetime or my memory that has had more players, you know, forego eligibility to enter the draft. So I think that sort of speaks to how talented this team was that there's that many players, but yeah, there's some, some pretty heavy hitters that I don't anticipate come back next year. 
Eric, now that uh, we've cleared the Pac-12 championship game, and even though there's one game to play, basically the move to the Big Ten, mm. you know, this is almost a just a Big Ten program now. Uh, I would think that Dan Lanning's been hit with some questions, and they're going to continue to hit him in regards to, does anything change? Mm. Does any approach change to any of this, transfer portal, recruiting, any of this, moving to the Big Ten? See, I think the thing that, that sort of differentiates Oregon in some ways from other teams in the Pac-12 is they've kind of already operated like an SEC kind of program here under Lanning and even under Cristobal before that in terms of how they've recruited nationally. I mean, they're they're set up to be one of the big guns from a recruiting perspective in the Big Ten immediately. You know, probably not at Ohio State's level, maybe not at Michigan's level, but kind of right there with Penn State. and I guess you'd throw in USC, who's joining the conference, is kind of the next group of programs from a recruiting perspective. So I don't know if there's much there. I, I think the one area I'll be curious to see, and to me has already been a strength, is just kind of the, the trench warfare. You know, is do they how, how do they address that differently? Will they? Um, this offensive line has been excellent two years in a row. I mean, Bo Nix, I think it's kind of crazy. He's been here for 25 games i think he's been sacked nine or ten times total in those games and that just sort of speaks to how well they've played and this year's offensive line is is one of i think four finalists for the joe moore award which is given to the best offensive line in the country so i I think they've proven they can play well there and then again the defensive line was probably until the pac-12 championship seen as i think probably still is is a real strength for this defense and so um they will certainly work hard this offseason to shore up their defensive line. There's no doubt about it because a lot, again, a lot of those guys are going, are going. But I don't know if that's as much uh, alterations being made to prepare to join another conference as much as it is just the reality of you had like half a dozen guys lose or you know exhaust eligibility in the 2023 season, and now you have to rebuild around it. So um, I don't know if there's going to be too much else will change. I think they feel pretty good about where they are and um i know it pains people to hear it because they didn't ultimately end up accomplishing probably any of their goals but this was a team that was just as good as anybody in the country i think and yeah you know if they would have survived that game in las vegas would be among the betting favorites to win the national championship amongst whatever four teams they were they were squared off against so um, i don't expect anything massive and i think the program's honestly in a pretty good spot even though there's a lot of doom and gloom right now on <laughs> duck message boards and duck social media circles. Of course. And I bet Eric, actually, if you look at the two, four, seven talent composite that Oregon's a good four to six spots ahead of Michigan. Yeah, I had, yeah, you're, I think you're right on that. So they'll enter the conference as one of the more talented teams. I don't think there's any question about that. Now it's just a, ma- a matter of managing the rest of it, which, Again, it's going to be interesting to see with the travel and the different types of teams you're playing. Eric Scopel, Duck Territory. Anything folks need to know about uh, where to find you, what you got going on, and what's going to be uh, on tap? Uh, I don't have any like special big breaking story I'm preparing for, um, but you can listen to our podcast, the Austin, sorry, the Otson Audibles podcast. You can find those on YouTube. You can find those on Spotify or whatever Apple, whatever podcast application you use. We'd love it if you come and, and, and listen to what we have to say and, and kind of work everybody through what this crazy month of December will be because it's uh, it's going to be never ending and a lot of big stuff is going to happen. So uh, yeah, check us out there. For sure. Eric, appreciate you stopping by as always. Yeah. Thanks, Mark.